Hello and welcome to the Tech Bytes audio cast. My name's Tim and I'm from the Bytes blogger Z, and with me is Dr. Roy Shesterwitz from the Tech Rights website. It's Friday night and I'm gonna get sauce. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. He tried to boss me and was outbossed. I fought the troll and the troll lost. I fought the troll and the troll lost. Underneath this creeper bridge, hoping goats will cross. Quoting Ashcroft and Tom Ridge. Right, hello I and good evening. It's a Tech Bytes audio cast. It's myself and Roy here, and this is episode 51. It's been a little over a week since the last episode, and that's uh, due to work commitments on my behalf. So, without further ado, I think Roy's going to kick the show off with a a few titles that have uh, hit his interest, and uh, Roy, I'll put it straight over to you. I think it's reasonable to start with something that happened today uh, for people who listen to the show today <coughs> and probably want to keep up to date. So the main news today, as far as I'm concerned, is the, uh, the settlement or the agreement between Apple and Nokia. Uh, the short story is uh, Apple basically agreed to pay to Nokia uh, for each iPhone it sells, maybe iPads as well, I'm not too sure what the scope of this is, and it's it's very, it's just, there is lots of secrecy there, and there is a kind of a uh, disclaimer of a gigantic size trying to spin uh, what was happening there, so <clears throat> just for a bit of background, the, uh, the situation was uh, Nokia signed a deal with Microsoft, or to put it differently, a executive for Microsoft who was becoming the CEO of Nokia, who was being passed to Nokia to sign a little with Microsoft, uh, is now behind a deal which would make Apple's phones a cash cow for another company making the uh, products on Apple a bit more expensive, which they are to begin with. Uh, and the speculation is the next target will be there for Android, um, that Nokia is going to try to help Microsoft out uh, by uh, putting a tax on Linux, which is exactly what I expected to happen uh, as soon as the deal was signed. Uh, so, so that's that's really discouraging news um, from my point of view. And I've been writing a huge deal recently about software patents because it's all over the news. Lots of people start to talk about the software patents issue and there were some rulings in the, uh, in the Supreme Court of the United States on the issue of the I4I patent deal, uh, patent uh, lawsuit against Microsoft. And the other thing was the uh, question of uh, willful infringement. So if you're a developer and you basically decide not to look at, pr- at any patents associated with something you might be developing, uh, what would your responsibility be? Well, the Supreme Court, which has a kind of a final say in many cases, uh, you cannot really escalate any higher. Uh, it's, it's basically making all those rulings which are really, really obnoxious and problematic for free software. Uh, and, you know, one of the latest ones was about uh, Microsoft. And, and we were, in some sense, on Microsoft's side because they were fighting against a company that was not exactly a patent troll, but it was a company using a software patent to, uh, to exert a lot of pressure and to try and get lots of money out of a company that actually makes something. Uh, so that's really uh, discouraging news. I'm uh, just writing loads about patents, and I wonder what you've uh, you found recently. Well, Roy, I mean, t- to be honest with you, over the last week, I've uh, I've been away from computing world for uh, in favour of my real job, as it were, and uh, so there's very little I would, I would add to what you've just said. One thing that did grab my attention as uh, I was trying to catch up on six days worth of. Uh, news in a, in a couple of hours was uh, this headline here this is um on business insider and it's been linked quite uh, quite heavily around around the web and it's uh, like i say from business insider and it's microsoft fan wants to shame carriers into at least trying to sell windows phones and this is quite an interesting little article it's um, talking about a chap called robert mcclaws who i believe was an ex uh, Microsoft MVP, who apparently is becoming a bit fed up with uh, Windows Phone 7 being being ignored, and he set up a website uh, called the Windows Phone Tattletale in order to try and uh, form a place where everybody who has a good experience seems to be a uh, 
I should tell you, uh, <clears throat> I found two people so far. One in IDG, which is a news organization, or proclaims to be a news organization, and the other person is Mary Jo Foley, who is a, one of the biggest boosters of Microsoft for a very long time, I think decades now. And they, they try, a, as far as I can tell, they try talking point of blaming the carriers and trying to say, well, mm -hmm. nothing's wrong with Windows Phone 7, uh, it's the other people who are trying to make it crash, or other people who are not willing to sell that. Uh, and they've been pushing these line uh, for the past week or so, trying to blame the carriers and the sellers, and <clears throat> you know nobody gives it a fair chance, nobody's trying to make it work. And, but actually, the press has been floated by all kinds of PR at the time they released the phone, and I think they spent about half a billion uh, dollars just advertising this thing. And, so, you know, they're not really in a position to complain about that. It's... Um, I mean, what was the main uh, crux of what I was bringing up here was this uh, this site, Windows Phone Tattletale, has been created to, presumably is partly to uh, amalgamate all the good reviews, uh, in inverted commas, of uh, Windows Phone 7 into one place and good experiences. And it's very telling that uh, so far, in looking at the site as of right now, it's got 27 comments only. Um, now... For myself and Roy, that probably doesn't come as much as a surprise than anybody who's yeah. got a, a smartphone. Well, we well um, yeah, that's as many people as are using Windows. Yeah, yeah. We, we, so, we've so we've so discussed so. before, I think, yeah. about uh, about the figures and about how many people seem to be using it or don't seem to be using. It. I certainly still haven't found anybody in uh, in my life that's uh, using a phone on these Windows Phone sevens. But that yeah. that being said, yeah. um, maybe they could send you a press release, but they don't have a copy and paste. Yeah. Maybe they use the yeah. version of the <laughs> that was they used to joke about one of the Microsoft uh, MVPs, as it is now, uh, going into these Microsoft sites, some of them critical of Microsoft, and just basically copying and pasting all kinds of press releases and things and trying to modify them slightly. It was really, really embarrassing what he did. So, Well, I've actually, I believe I've spoken to the creator of this site via Twitter just very briefly. I'm hoping that uh, after a a couple more uh, conversations with him, I, he would uh, agree to come on the show and actually uh, speak about the, the Windows Phone 7. I think it's only fair that whilst I have reservations and have certainly been very critical about the product, that somebody who apparently wants to champion it uh, should come on and, uh, and and champion it. So certainly it I'll be... be interesting, yeah. sorry, but would be uh, equally interesting to see a person who can tell us what's so special about Windows 7 and Windows yeah. 8 because it's, it's really hard questions to... Uh, well, to be, to be fair to this uh, to this chap, we have to take him on face value, and he's coming across as being somebody who wants to champion the Windows Phone Sevens. So of course, the the offer would be there for him to to come on the show and and speak about uh, what he what he wants to advocate. Uh, the only thing that sits very, a little bit uncomfortably with me, now this site was created and from the way it was sold to me on the various. Uh, Sites that I saw it linked on. It was a, it was a case of a, an enthusiast like maybe myself uh, creating this site purely because we were frustrated in uh, about the lack of interest or the lack of uh, knowledge about Windows Phone Seven. And then you get to the site itself and you start reading some of the some of the text. Now on the front page, I'll just read you the first first couple of sentences, but I think you'll get an idea of what I'm trying to uh, imply from uh, from just reading this out. Microsoft has gone out of their way to build an awesome experience for the phone with Windows Phone 7. But the one experience they can't control is what happens when you walk into the retail store and buy one. And it's too bad because the retail experience, as handled, that's a typo, as handled by carriers and their affiliates is an abomination. It's pretty hard to try and new device. It, to me, it reads like a sales pitch. Um, now at the bottom of the, the web page, although this doesn't mean anything at all, but again, it's not something I'd expect to see in a, an end user or a, an average user's uh, advocacy web page. It says copyright 2011 Windows Phone uh, Tattletail all rights reserved. That's not something I put in the bottom of my website. And if it, if this is a, a a genuine average user type uh, happy customer um, championing of Windows Phone 7, it reads very um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for now is professional, uh, very uh, business-like probably is the, is the best way to read it. Um, the author makes an admission that he is an MVP, so I can confirm what I said earlier. Um, he's a former Microsoft MVP, um, and he's an un unapologetic fan of Microsoft who makes no bones about it. Um, I would love to see Windows Phone 7 succeed. So on that basis then, maybe he will uh, be so kind to come on the show and explain why he thinks that Windows Phone 7 is so great and what exactly it offers that none of the other phones 
on the market with Android. It's or... really interesting that they try to blame the uh, the shops now. Um, <clears throat> what's the age? What's the age of the side? Because the talking point started about a week ago. 